John Cola with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. We're coming at you all the way from Oahu, Hawaii today to share with you guys one of my favorite fruits I like to eat, and uh, that is the pineapple. So where we are today is we're at the Dole Plantation. There's Dole Plantation there, and then there's actually Dole in, uh, in plants right there in front of me. We've got tour buses coming in and all kinds of people having us, a major tourist attraction. But besides being a tourist attraction, they educate people about the pineapples, different varieties of pineapples. They have a pineapple maze, a nice actually garden walk, all kinds of stuff happening here about pineapples. Why I'm here today is to learn specifically about pineapples and share some of my experiences with pineapples with you so that you can eat pineapples so that they won't burn your mouth. You also learn why they burn your mouth and make your mouth bleed sometimes, as well as learn how to pick the ripest pineapple you can and uh, ways to minimize the burn in the mouth. So anyways, uh, let's head over into the uh, Dole Plantation and I'll share some more information about pineapples with you. So now we're on the grounds of the Dole Plantation. There are many different signs that educate people about the pineapple. So it says this one is the origins of the pineapple. So the pi pineapple, it says, it's believed to have originated in the lowlands of Paraguay. So the, yes, that's South America. And then it's gotten distributed all over the world. At one point, Hawaii was probably one of the largest producers of the pineapples in the whole world. So in order to get the product they're growing here in Hawaii out to the masses, actually they did a technology of the day known as canning. Canning only came about in the 1900s and you know before that everybody ate everything fresh. <laughs> and actually my mom, because she was born and raised here on Oahu, worked in a pineapple cannery and she would tell me stories of how it really messed up her hands, you know, all the acid of the pineapple. In any case, I want to let you guys know that we no longer need to eat canned foods to have a wide selection of foods. You know, things that are canned are often canned in syrup or sugars or corn syrup and other additives. In addition, most cans are lined with BPA, which is definitely not a good thing. And furthermore, all the canned uh, foods have been heat processed where it denatures and you lose all the enzymes. So and actually also reduces the nutrition in the food. So whether you're buying canned uh, pineapple or pineapple juice that's canned, you know, a lot lower nutrition than fresh. I always like to encourage and uh, let you guys know that freshest is best. So eat that fresh pineapple if you could get it. So as you guys can see behind me is a pineapple demonstration garden. They have over two dozen different varieties of pineapples. But I think it's sad that, you know, most of you guys just go to the store and you just get pineapple and they're all just labeled pineapple you don't know the cultivar or the variety I mean think about it with apples you can go down and get the cultivar you know you could buy a red delicious apple a Fuji apple a granny Smith apple a Rome apple a Pippin apple a Macintosh apple and you know you can know which kind but when you buy pineapple it's simply labeled pineapple even though there can be and are many varieties the predominantly grown variety here in Hawaii, for the most part, on a big commercial agricultural level, is the smooth cayenne variety. And I don't know why that one was chosen as the variety that will be grown. It could be because of disease resistance. It could be because of the you know, ability to ship and stay fresher and firmer longer. It could have been because of the flavor or the sweetness. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the one that's most exported uh, from Hawaii. So what we're gonna do next is actually share with you guys uh, actually how a pineapple is formed and grows and the pineapple does take about 18 months, you know, a year and a half to grow, you know, into a total fruit that can be harvested. So here's where a pineapple begins. We got the plant here that has these nice little jagged spikes on them on the outside and uh, right in the middle of the plant, kind of think of an aloe vera plant if you know what that is, on the inside a little flower forms and you can kind of see it right in the middle. I can't put my hand in there too much because I might get poked too bad. But it's uh, nice and red and looks fairly nice actually. So what happens is after it, the flower develops then it actually turns into fruit and no pollination is required. So after that flower forms then you get a little nubby pineapple right here. This is kind of like uh, getting a bit hard and it's starting to make that uh, fruit that we all know and love super tiny, super small and doesn't yet have that you know, classic stock on the top of it. So this is the next stage of pineapple growth. It's actually getting a little bit bigger. The little green uh, top is coming out finally. And where the little eyes are, actually, there's little flowers coming out. This is so cool. I've never seen this before. Isn't this the cutest thing you ever saw? It's like a little baby. Little babies are so cute. Well, check it out. 
little miniature pineapples are so cute also. There's a little baby, and next we're gonna go ahead and show you the, the daddy once they get bigger. All right, so now we finally got the full-size pineapples just about ready to be harvested. As you guys can see, the color on these guys are pretty good. They're uh, mostly yellow with a little bit of green. I'll probably wait until they're a little bit more yellow and be even riper. I guess the next thing after showing you guys how these pineapples grow, I'm kind of getting hungry for pineapple. So let's go ahead and sit down and share more information about the pineapple, why they burn your mouth, and uh, how to pick a ripe one. Now we're gonna share some more pineapple information with you guys, and I'm gonna get to eat my lunch because I'm actually quite hungry today. I haven't eaten yet. In any case, uh, what we're gonna do now is actually have uh, several different kinds of pineapples. And first, you're gonna get to play the pineapple guessing game. So if you have somebody else watching this YouTube video with you, confer with them and see which one. It's like, okay, say I was giving you one of these pineapples for free, you could have eat any of them that you want. Pick which one you would take in the next couple seconds. Do, 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 <laughs> All right, so did you guys pick a pineapple that you, you would eat yet? I know which one I would eat because I was here to buy them and I sampled actually a few of these varieties before I bought them to know how they tasted like. Now, let me go ahead and introduce the varieties that we got. We got a Dole from the very plantation I visited, a Royal Hawaiian Tropical Gold Pineapple. This is the one that may be imported to a store near you, whether it's a Costco or whether it's a grocery store. Uh, next here we got the Frankie's Nursery Mili Kalima. It's known as the Honey Cream Pineapple. And finally we got the Sweet Gold Sugar Minis Pineapple. So if you're picking a pineapple based on the size, John, I want to get the most pineapple, right? I'll be full after I eat it. You might pick this large one. Uh, you know, that would probably be the wrong choice. This guy cost me $2.79 for a fairly large pineapple. If you pick this one, the one without the crown, you would be the winner. This pineapple here probably ran me about uh, approximately $13 or so uh, without the crown. They take the crown off so that you cannot actually replant the crown and grow pineapples of this variety because it is a special patented variety. And I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Finally, we have the uh, Sweet Golds. Uh, they are about two dollars and fifty cents each, two for five, and uh, they're actually quite sweet, much better than a standard large one. So uh, what we're going to do now is actually we're going to cut these guys open, share more about picking a ripe pineapple, and learn why it burns your mouth. Now I'm going to do the taste test, and uh, we, to do that we're going to need a knife. So I got a standard uh, kind of bread knife. I like the bread knife. They seem to kind of like do a sawing motion to cut through the thick uh, pineapple. And uh, that's, that's what I'm going to use today. Otherwise a nice serrated knife is what I like to use or a nice sharp ceramic knife. I think we're going to try the Dole Hawaiian Gold Pineapple first. Now the first thing I want to share with you guys is when picking out a pineapple, you always want to try to get it as ripe as you possibly can. You know, I once went to the Dole uh, plantation and they had a sign which one of these pineapples is ripe and they had a picture of green ones uh, you know ones that are lighter green ones that are more yellow and the answer was they're all ripe so one of the things is that uh, they're <laughs> if they're being harvested they're ripe according to the people harvesting them not according to me I'm sure you've eaten plenty of pineapples that have burned your mouth that didn't taste so good and you know acidic those aren't truly ripe you know so to assure you're getting a riper one you want to look for the color. Number one, the color it should be a nice, vibrant color. You know, it shouldn't be like a tomato, right? A pink tomato, unless it's a pink variety, is not ripe. You want to wait till it fully turns red, even gets a little bit soft. Now, the thing that people don't know about pineapples is that people say, John, you could buy the pineapple now and then you could ripen it on your counter, right? Well, that's a half truth. And, you know, half truths are not full truths. Here's the thing once a pineapple is disconnected from the plant, right? it can no longer get the flow of the sugars into the pineapple. So the longer you leave the pineapple on the plant, the higher the sugar content will be in general. So uh, in general also, the colors change as the pineapple is on the plant longer. So if you got richer color in the pineapple, you pro probably also have more sugar content. Once the pineapple is harvested, there will no be no additions to the sugar content. That is 
it stops, it's cut off. It's like when you cut the umbilical cord from your mom, you can't get any nutrition from your mom no more. Same thing with the pineapples. Once you separate it from the plant, it will never get any sweeter than it is. At that point, from then on out, the acid may reduce actually in there, but it's not gonna get any sweeter. In addition, it will get softer. Some people like to eat their pineapples soft, some people like to eat them hard. Uh, when it gets too soft, it actually starts to ferment and go bad, so this is not a good thing. I was surprised when Frankie's harvested their pineapples and sold me this, and I'm like, this is ripe? I mean, look at that, look at the difference in color. They're like, yes, it's actually better when it's in this stage. And uh, after eating it, I would have to agree with them. That being said, my goal is to get the nicest, full color, most vibrant pineapple that looks appealing and sexy to your eyes to get the sweetest one, number one. I guess with that, let's go ahead and cut this guy open here. These guys could see their uh, little brother getting carved up. All right, guys, this is happening to you next. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom, nice sawing motion. All right, now we got a nice round there. I always encourage you guys to smell your fruit and smell all the foods before you eat them. Mmm, nice pineapple scent. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the knife and just carve off the outside. We're not gonna wanna eat this skin, especially if you're buying conventionally grown pineapples, which actually all these are today because that's the best I could do. It's hard to find organic pineapples actually. Um, they are sprayed with uh, fungicides and other things on the skin. Thymobenzol normally is what is applied. So you do not want to eat the skin. I'd probably cut back you know, a little bit so that you don't even eat any of the eyes or anything like that. All right, we got that shaved down pretty good. Now we're just gonna go ahead and cut off some nice pieces. Now, I always like to eat around the center of the core. The core is very fibrous. This is actually where the nutrition and uh, water and nutrients are transferred from the base of the pineapple that's connected on the bottom into the fruit itself uh, occasionally. And I would normally juice those guys, but not often do I eat them. Now we're gonna get to try our Royal Hawaiian Tropical Gold Pineapple. Mmm. Actually, good flavor. Not super sweet, but one of the things I'm glad about is that there's not a hardcore acid taste. It's actually fairly ripe, and I'm not getting that tongue burn. So I'd have to say after eating that section of the Royal Hawaiian Dole Pineapple, it's actually fairly good, probably one of the better ones I've had since it is here on the islands, and they are grown here. I don't get too many of those guys that are actually exported onto the mainland that actually are, are this good. That being said, if we had a special tool called the Brix refractometer, zero to 32, we can measure the sugar levels and also see the total dissolved solids and nutrients uh, in the pineapple. And in my estimation, you know, it'd probably be about an average pineapple. It wouldn't be super good, but it, it'd be a good one, you know. I've also had plenty of pineapples that are subpar and below average because they are being picked far too early. So next, let's go ahead and try a different variety. And I know you, you guys know about different varieties of fruits. You guys saw a whole bunch, uh, you know, when I was showing you the little garden there with their, all the sample pineapples. And uh, this is one of them. This is the Sweet Gold Sugar Mini. And this is actually at the uh, KCC Farmer's Market. The cool thing about pineapples, if they do include the top and they don't take out the little things up here, the little uh, stem, you can actually just, uh, number one, spin these guys off like so. Now it's uh, easy instead of having to cut it off. You don't, you lose minimal fruit this way. What you're then gonna do is you're gonna take this uh, stem here and you're gonna pick off some of these leaves on the bottom. There's a whole bunch of them. Then you're gonna chuck this away and uh, let it sit in the sun or in the shade actually for a while. All this thing will dry up here, right? Then once it's dried up, then you're gonna stick this actually in the ground. You need to have a nice frost-free conditions, tropical conditions. And they'll start actually growing roots out of here. And then this plant will grow and then a whole new pineapple will come out the top. So uh, that's a fun little project to do. So what I'm here to do today is to eat this little baby. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and take our knife and we're gonna cut off the bottom here. Smell it, mmm, smells a little bit different than that other one. Let's go ahead and cut off a nice uh, core piece here. This is small little pineapple, not a lot of fruit on it for me. Check it out, there we go. Wow, actually it doesn't smell as acid, kind of smells sweet. 
kind of reminds you of how a peach smells actually. It's kind of a trip. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut off the skin here. Finally, we're gonna cut off a piece of this pineapple to eat. Here we go, sampling the sweet gold pineapple. Wow. Instead of just having like a standard pineapple flavor, kind of like pineapple and peaches, like peaches and cream or peaches and pineapple. Wow, quite good. Definitely like this more than the other one. And I would gather that if I did a Brix reading, the Brix reading would be higher. Now the Brix is a tool you can measure the sugars and also the total solid, dissolved solids in the pineapple to determine which one is higher quality. I do have a past video on that if you're interested in learning more about that. That being said, our tongues, best Brix meters God given to us that you don't have to buy. I mean, if something tastes good, generally it is, you know, uh, more nutrient dense for you. I think I'm gonna eat this whole thing next. Mmm, all right, now I'm just gnawing on the core. Sweet gold pineapple. Might be thinking, John, how come your tongue not bleeding? Your mouth not all, not all, is not all on fire. Sometimes I eat a pineapple, my tongue starts to bleed, and then I'm eating my pineapple, and I look, and I got bloody pineapple. Let me tell you, I've done that before many times. It's definitely not fun. And uh, let me share with you guys why that happens. Many people think it's the acid. Oh, the stuff is so acidic, it's burning your tongue. You know, the acid, 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 acid. No, man, it's not the acid. Think about it. Does an orange ever make your tongue bleed like a pineapple does? No. Think of what other fruit can make your tongue bleed. Figs. I already have a, a reason why figs make your tongue bleed. Be sure to check that video if you want to learn why. But the reason why the pineapple makes your tongue bleed is not the acid in the pineapple, it's the bromelain. The bromelain is a protolytic enzyme that breaks down proteins. The bromelain is in the pineapple, not for us, because actually enzymes are good for us, uh, but they're in it for the pineapple so that bugs and pests will not attack the pineapple. Uh, for example, if worms start eating the pineapple, it's gonna basically, because the worm, everything's made out of protein, the protolytic enzyme's gonna break down the worms so now bugs and stuff can't really attack the pineapple. That's why the bromelain's in there. Now, uh, the problem is when they harvest pineapples and they're not fully ripe, right? There's a higher bromelain or a higher enzyme content in there. So what we need to do is we need to lower that down so you don't get that dreaded mouth burn so that you can enjoy one or two pineapples you know and not have to stop after a half a pineapple because your mouth is burning and it's on fire and it's bleeding actually I mean I've had to stop eating pineapples when they're like oh this is so good and it's like my mouth is burning you just can't eat more plus then it wrecks everything else for the rest of the day because your tongue now has to heal so here are my top three tips on how to reduce that. Number one is you're gonna to wanna to get the ripest pineapple you possibly can. You know, get one that has a nice full color and even after you get it, you're gonna set it out. And now setting it out will not ripen it any further because the sugar content is not gonna go up any further than where it is. Remember, it's been cut off the vine, the sugar level stops, but what will happen is the flavor might mellow out, the acid might reduce. They'll be eliminated with a bromelain burn. We could call it bromelain burn. And that's going to reduce off as well. Of course, you don't want to let this uh, hang out too long because then it'll get soft, then it'll actually start to ferment, and that's not a good thing. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, a tip I'd like to use uh, more often than you know letting them hang out is actually, if I want to eat a pineapple tomorrow, I'll pre-cut it today. So I'll slice all the skin off, cut it all into pieces, put it in a bowl, like a glass bowl, in the fridge, and let it hang out in the fridge overnight. Something having to do with the action of cutting up the fruit and then letting it hang out in the fri fridge will reduce the bromelain content so that the next day you'll be able to eat it uh, you know, with minimal bromelain burn. The final way I like to do uh, to minimize and eliminate the bromelain burn is I like to take the pineapple, a fresh one, uh, cut off all the skin and simply juice it. Then I could get the nutrition out of the pineapple, less the fiber. Um, and I could drink as much pineapple juice as I want without it burning. That being said, I usually do dilute my pineapple juice with maybe water, sparkling water to make a nice pineapple soda or some coconut water to mellow it out because it can't actually be quite strong. 
One of the reasons why I like pineapple, if I kind of feel I got a sore throat coming on or I've been traveling a lot, I just like down like pineapple juice and orange juice and with its high vitamin C content and with the enzymes and the bromelain protolytic enzymes, seems to wipe out anything that I might be getting. So next up, we got the creme de la creme. And actually, it's this guy right here. It's called the Honey Cream Pineapple. And yes, you heard that right. I paid like 13 bucks for this pineapple. For this one and another one, I paid like $20 for two pieces of fruit. But let me tell you, I mean, I've never tasted a pineapple sweeter than this. The grower here, and this is a special variety that only they grow, is not available anywhere else. They actually have a patent on it. The grower told me that this is only a few points away from honey on the brick scale. So we know how sweet honey is. I mean, this stuff is almost as sweet as honey in a fruit nonetheless. So I just had to buy two of them. I've already eaten one of them. Now we're gonna save the other one for you guys and get my on-camera reaction for you guys so that you guys know what kind of fruits are out there. I mean, if you just go to your store and buy pineapples, you might be getting the Hawaiian Royal, Hawaiian Gold style, or you might be getting some other kind that's being imported from you know, Central America. You're definitely not, not gonna get some of these high quality, high end, sweet varieties with low acid. I mean, these guys are just so good. Let's go ahead and uh, rip open this guy next. First, I wanna show you guys the color. I've showed you the guys the color of the other ones, but this one's actually more of a white color instead of a yellow color. All right, so I got done with eye surgery. Now my pineapple can't look at me when I'm cutting it up. And uh, so we got the honey cream pineapple here. We're gonna go ahead and cut off and we're gonna go ahead and uh, share with you guys what it's like. Oh, got a bad spot, man. I want a refund. Actually, I want to get it replaced minimally. One of the cool things is the uh, the grower, the farmer, said we never had to, you know, give a refund on these pineapples, and I believe it. So this is what I've been waiting for all day. Those other ones were just kind of like appetizers. This is my main course. Honey cream, baby. Mmm. Wow. My body's shivering on the inside. It's like the sweetest pineapple I've ever tasted. It's mellowed out a few days since I bought it. Low acid. If I had to say it tastes like something, I mean it tastes like a honey cream pineapple you guys have never tasted. But if I had to taste, say it tastes like something, it probably tastes like a honeydew melon, how sweet a honeydew melon can be, plus a pineapple. Man, so delicious. So the last thing I want to share with you guys today is how to pick out a ripe pineapple at the store. Well, if you're not in Hawaii or where some, somewhere where pineapples grow naturally, you're probably not going to get the ultra ripe one that you're looking for with low acid so it won't burn your mouth because they got to pick them far too early. And farmers are in the business of farming not to give you ripe pineapples, but to make some cash, money, some moolah. And if they pick their pineapples overripe or you know, ripe where you would want to eat it, it will spoil really fast and they will then lose their profits. So uh, some tips that I'd like to share with you guys. Number one, what I like to look for personally, I like to see a nice vibrant color pineapple. The more color in it means more higher antioxidants and more nutrition. It also means it was attached to the mother plant longer to obtain more sugars. So this one's actually a nice uniform color. Check it out as I spin it around really really pleasing to the eye compared to like a green pineapple that doesn't look too interesting and frankly looks more like a vegetable and many people don't like to eat their vegetables some people say oh john if you go up to the top and you could pull a little you know uh leaf out like that oh it's ripe it's ripe this has nothing to do with the ripeness if you can pull a leaf out that just means it's probably been disconnected off the plant for a while it's kind of getting older so the leaves are going to be falling out you know sooner rather than later so I wouldn't necessarily use that technique. Another technique I like to do is use my snipper. Mmm, has a nice pineapple scent. That's probably a good one. Another thing I like to do sometimes is, uh, you know, gently press on the pineapple. If there's spots that depress like relatively easy and you can put your finger into, then that's probably one that's probably overripe or starting to rot. I mean, a pineapple should be fairly firm, but give to a little bit of pressure but not super rock hard, right? You also wanna look on the eyes for bad sections. So, you know, this is a fairly even color all the way around. Sometimes there'll be parts that are, you know, like black and like all soft and mushy, you know? 
if a piece has mushiness and rot on it, that means the rest of the fruit is soon to follow. Um, another cool test you could do if you're buying your pineapples at Whole Foods, if you go up to Whole Foods and ask the uh, produce guy, hey, I want to sample your pineapple, see how ripe it is, pick out a ripe one and have them cut it open for you. Um, by their training, they're supposed to actually give you a sample of anything in the store that you'd like before you buy it. So uh, those are some of the tips that I use to select a ripe pineapple. Probably for me, most, it's like the color. If I see something that's appealing to my eyes, it's probably also appealing to my other senses, such as smell. And uh, that's probably what I'd go on. Also try to, you know, go to the tropics like here in Hawaii and eat plenty pineapple while you're here and enjoy some of these ripe, unique varieties. The final thing I'd like to say is that you can purchase this guy online at hawaiiancrown.com. They will mail these to you. Now they probably can get a bit expensive when they're shipping your pineapples, but it's cool that at least you can try this variety, which in my opinion far exceeds and is much better than the standard uh, dull pineapple and probably most of the other pineapples that you're gonna buy at your local grocery store. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this episode learning more about pineapples, how to pick a ripe one, and how to eat them if, even if you don't get a ripe one so that it doesn't burn your mouth. I really enjoy you know, learning about each specific fruit and vegetable that I enjoy eating and sharing that with you guys so that you guys can eat more fruits and vegetables. At the end of the day, that is my goal. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time and remember, Keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best. All right, this is John Cold with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go open the van here and show you guys what I'm eating this month. Hey, look, Mom, I'm a pineapple.